Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Ghoulish with me, Max Booth, a host. On today's episode, I am talking to a friend of mine named Kelby Losack. Kelby's been on the program, I think, two other times previously, so it uh, should be no surprise that he would come back again to uh, folks who have listened to uh, previous episodes. Kelby is a good guest. He has lots of fun things to talk about. On this specific episode, we are all talking about the the topic of of hurricanes. Now, do you uh, have a are you, are you interested in hurricanes? Well, good 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 thing you listen to this. You download this episode, pal, because this is the one that's gonna satisfy your curiosity. We're talking about Hurricanes because Kelby is releasing a new novella called Hurricane Season. Uh, it's limited to 200 copies only, and each copy is signed by Kelby. He's selling them only through his uh, website, kelbylosick.bigcartel.com. I will obviously link to that in the, the show notes of the episode as well. My, uh, it says on the, the website the publication date is next week, May 14th. However, I received my copy a few days ago. I haven't had time to uh, read it yet, but I'm super excited to get into it. And we talk about what the book is about. We talk about why he wrote it. We talk about Hurricanes throughout the whole fucking episode because that's the topic the program and i am a professional and i stay on topic at all times hurricane season by kelby losack go pick it up before they don't exist anymore i guess and in the meantime listen to the conversation we had which is coming up in the in, in, in seconds from now are you ready it's happening it's happening right now <laughs> <laughs> Auto, Red Dead, uh, a few games like that, and yeah. uh, those will probably last me several years. So, yeah, so I, I have some of those as well, and I'm I'm never gonna play them. <laughs> I buy a game and like I play it for ten minutes, and I'm like, ah, what else is going on, guys? This is shitty. It took me two and a half hours to even download it. I don't know why it takes so long so long to download games now, but it does, and. That upsets me because I'm an old man inside of a young, big body. <laughs> and then you, you, you still have to put the disc in too. Like I don't get it. Like what, what are y'all downloading exactly? And it's odd, right? Like, is it downloading like in case you want to play the the online content, even though you don't want to? I think the disc yeah, is know. like a placebo. <laughs> it makes you feel yeah, okay just... about spending that much money if you have something physical to hold but there's nothing on it only the download code that's it that's all that was on it yeah so i have you on this podcast is this how many times have you been on now three is this three this is lucky number three. Oh my god i keep having you come back why is that i don't know you're you're insane you haven't learned your lesson no, we keep trying to get arrested when we do this podcast, but we haven't gotten arrested yet. Well, I haven't. Maybe you've gotten arrested since the last podcast, have you? It's been eight months. Uh, no, I, I had a couple run-ins, no arrests. So, yeah, the yeah. runaway from the wall. You ran. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant by run-in. I had to, yeah. I had to run into an alley and jump a fence to get away. <laughs> See, I've run from police in my youth. Not now, because I'm a grown man. <laughs> I'm also really slow. <laughs> they would yeah. catch me. <laughs> you're never going to catch me. They're like, you're in jail already, sir. <laughs> you're about to be electrocuted right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? I got if the I, death sentence. Or... If I was given the death penalty, I would just be completely delusional about it and be in denial and act like I was still on the run the whole time, even up until I was about to die. Like, shh, I'm on the run. No one say anything. I'll kill you all. What I don't understand about death sentencing, like having people on death row, is like if, if you sentence me to death, I'm just going to wild out. Like, 
I know I'm gonna die. Well, why am I just gonna sit here and take? It? <laughs> why would you be polite about it? like, oh yes, yes, Phil, thank you for killing me right now. It's so cool that the government can decide who gets to be homicided. Yeah, yeah. No, death row is a hoax. That shit's fake. You you gonna submit to my anthology? Another one? Yeah, it's a uh, for anyone listening, I guess. Uh, it's called the Milsey Seat Stories from Death Row. It's uh, accepting submissions right now. Oh shit! I guess I need to uh... see. I'm like I'm like a method writer, like how you have method actors. So I'm gonna need to go um, commit a string of murders and get myself sentenced so that I can write something. Uh, we're talking about none of this for this episode. Uh, we're talking about something that uh, is controlled only by God. Hurricanes. What is what? What is one of these? I think it's like uh, a hurricane is like uh, the wet fart of a tornado. Are they connected? Like, are they like? Is it a tornado that like? Oval extends its land and just hits ocean. I don't know anything about Wessel. <laughs> Actually, I know that's wrong, but yeah. I don't know like too much. <laughs> okay. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. You actually, this was the one question you sent me was, uh, "What is a hurricane?" And I did no research. Um, well, what is this book I... about? Hurricane season is the title. So I wanted to capture a tone with the book was my main goal with this one was to try and capture a specific tone. And uh, I've always felt that like storms and ghosts like have a very similar vibe to them and uh, like experiencing, you know, haunted houses or whatever and also being like stuck in hurricanes and shit. I uh, I got to thinking about um, I had hurricanes on my mind a lot because uh, this started brewing after right after Harvey. I was like, it was the first time I thought you know I ought to write something about hurricanes, and uh, the two just kind of melded together. And over the years, where I had the thought in my mind before I actually started writing it, um, my uh. One of my best friends, uh, Marcus, he lives in a haunted trailer. So, well, you know, was, you have uh, to elaborate on that. Well, he you has can't... a ghost in, in his house. Okay, keep going. You, you can't just say, oh, he has a ghost. <laughs> this isn't the fucking the YouTube show you run. You need to, you need to tell me what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he, uh, there were some. Uh, different people staying with him at another point in time who sort of kind of opened up uh, a connection to another side and invited some things in and the things never left. And so there are like um, slight poltergeist activity, uh, a lot of just presence activity. And this is like every single person who's ever stayed at his house from who you know exists on the whole spectrum from skeptic to total weirdo like myself they all say the same shit like bro shit's really creepy here have you stayed at this place yeah i've i've uh seen it I, i've seen it a couple of times and what uh, did you experience um one just like i'm like a major empath aura reader like so like i could kind of sense the shit from the get-go uh you can see shadows moving on the peripheral from you know at different times and um probably the craziest story is one that he has i mean there's a lot of actual like audible sounds reactions like doors opening and slamming shut and actually like seeing that shit happen but uh craziest one was he thought his nephew was staying there but his nephew had actually gone home and he he gets there and he's like chopping it up with this this kid 
that's you know sitting there in the dark and he's like you know all right you know take you good have a good night and everything blah 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 and uh his mom was there she said uh what who were you uh who were you talking to and you know he names his nephew and she was like he, he ain't here like he left yeah is it possible <laughs> someone some child had broken into this house he was talking it to could this, be. this criminal delinquent. Yeah, yeah. He he could have just been talking to, you know, a child home invader. I had a, across the street from the house I grew up in. It was like a family of seven, seven kids. And the youngest would always walk around with a can of ravioli. He would just at random times pop it open and just eat it cold. He was it's just something he did, unrelated to what you just said. But one time, <laughs> that kid uh, he woke us all up because he had just broken into uh, my house and was just playing with toys like at three a.m. and we had to like say, "Hey, go go home, kid. You broke in. Leave." And then he left. So that <laughs> reminds me of that. Maybe it was the same kid. Maybe it was a ghost, but I don't think. I think it was just that kid who always ate ravioli. But Neville brought like a spoon or anything with him. He would always have to ask like whoever he was with to give him a spoon or a milk. You would think he would just have one with him. Yeah, if he's a cereal ravioli can carrier, then you know. It was so disgusting just watching him slope that stuff down. Him and I once got into a big fight because he was insisting uh, Kid Rock's real name was some crazy-ass name. I was like, no, that can't be true. And we got into it for a long time. I don't know what name he was saying now. What does this haunted trailer have to do with uh, uh, Spooky Hurricanes? So it sits where... Well, actually, I mean, he recently moved. Not like I'm going to give out his location or whatever, but do it. <laughs> it uh, his address is if you Google Maps it. No, um, so he lives close to uh, the Brazos River, which overflowed during Harvey, um, and just turned shit into like fucking water world around here. And uh, since I kind of in my head was mixing like you know his ghost stories with like my desire to write something about hurricanes i figured hey just set the hurricane story in this house is this is this book a a novel or is it like a silly collection i wasn't positive from like the promo you have on the website oh yeah it's a novel uh in sort of that you know beignet style uh this two characters so like the plot i guess of it is like uh two roommates um one just recently out of a job they're sitting on like a stockpile of drugs because the other one is a drug dealer and his little plan is to like ride out this hurricane and be the only drug dealer in town when the shit you know kind of cools down that's a pretty good plan yeah, yeah, you think like it's a really good plan, and then the hurricane turns out to be like extremely bad. So, <laughs> really, <laughs> it's one of the bad ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of the bad ones. So, you live in uh, you're near San Antonio, uh, yeah, yeah. Do uh, y'all ever had any hurricane experience though? My only experience is like whenever like Houston gets them. Back when I was looking at the hotel, I would think, oh, fuck, because I knew the hotel would be extremely fucking busy because everybody from Houston would be coming to my hotel. And it was just a nightmare because we would always be out of rooms and somehow like uh, uh, what's that fucking company that helps people? Red Cross. (laughs) They would would, uh, always like overbook my hotel and people would be coming in saying, oh, Red Cross gave me this coupon and said I had a night at this hotel. And I would be like, we all sold out, uh, ma'am. I can't help you, but you can hang out in the lobby if you want. And then I would get yelled at for things beyond my control. And Usually, we would get like the uh, 
the drippage of a hillocane, like you know, like when you ej- ejaculate and like a little bit later you get some yeah, 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 coming you got out, that little dribble coming off the tip. Yeah, of the so we would get that, and sometimes we would also lose electricity, like with a sold out hotel, and they would get mad at me about that. So when I think of hurricanes, I think of just like rude people being mean to custom mill service employees. Yeah, it has major ripple effects, like regardless of the actual impact of the storm itself or or whatever, like it just affects like it rocks everything. I mean, uh, we we actually fled to San Antonio whenever um, Harvey hit and then uh, just, you know, there's the whole displacement dealing with that and then coming back, everything is like fucking third world country, like just well tell us just describe it like when you did go back like what was it like um everything just like smells like dead fish and uh because there's a bunch of like dead fish in the street oh yeah i guess they just like wash up onto it huh yeah yeah and uh you know there's like i work construction so like we did a few uh remodels um and everywhere you go is just like drywall furniture clothes like everything that exists within a house up to like four feet or whatever yeah it's just like out at the road just everywhere and everything smells like mold and just have you uh like been yeah. caught up in one like well you like didn't have time to like go to san antonio like how many like have you experienced in your life um (laughs) well we live on the coast so every single one that comes through we experience but not all of them really are worth talking about and not all of them get talked about except by like us yeah but like uh because i remember specifically there was one that was like hurricane bill I was like, wow. What a shitty name. <laughs> it, it whatever magic they were doing worked though. They give this, you know, they give it some just nobody name and it didn't do shit. Like there was some wind and maybe that's the trick, man. Like call it like Hurricane Keith. That's why you give a hurricane a name like Katrina and you yeah. you you fuck some shit up. Hurricane <laughs> uh Be- Beezlebub. <laughs> Oh no, don't call it that. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Hurricane <laughs> Ultimate Hurric- Destruction. <laughs> yeah. Hurricane Optimus Prime. Will you stop it? <laughs> you will go to kill the planet. I. <laughs> will you living? Um, I mean, are you from Texas? Like, will you in Texas during Katrina? Yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of uh, migration from. Um, louisiana over to like houston and all the surrounding regions there's i mean still that's that's like the story of a lot of people that uh you get to know from around here you'd be like you know you start asking people you you always been from around here they're like nah i moved here after katrina it's like pretty common thing to hear same thing uh down by me in san antonio too like i've uh, talked to many people who moved after Katrina, and I was like, ah, I was twelve and living in Indiana. I don't know what you're talking about, old old man. <laughs> uh, uh, we did stay during one that actually, um, you know, hit and was a little scary. Uh, we there was some family shit going on that I'll skirt around talking about in public, but um we we were staying we didn't have a a means to move and uh so we're like my grandfather and i are boarding up all the windows and shit and uh so you're just like in the dark and um that's where like i sort of called back to that time as well with like writing hurricane season like getting the the imagery and the feel back in my head was like that time of just being in total darkness with all this like howling wind outside was just it's it's bonkers and it brings on some uh like sort of hallucinatory 
experiences a little bit. You start to, you know, sort of see shapes moving in the dark and shit. The thing about, like, waiting out a tenacious storm like that, like, even, like, with a tornado, which I've, I've done, it's, like, it almost gives you, like, a cosmic type of vibe, vibe, because, like, it reminds you that you pretty much mean nothing in this universe. At any second, just yeah. a fucking natural disaster could just come sweeping through and annihilate you from existence, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Yeah, yeah, you just wiped out, like... And I'm, uh, I'm not a, I wouldn't call myself a control freak. I'm not like a micromanaging type at all, but, um, I do like to be able to control when shit goes wrong. Like I like to be able to take care of things and shit like that just gives me like extreme anxiety. Cause there's just like, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> it's like, nah, if this hurricane's coming, it's coming. So, I mean, that is what it is. I I'm going to live throughout the day, or well, I'll be dead. Either the way, I mean, it's not up to me at this point. I, I spend every day like that. I'm like, well, I might die today. But it's not up to me. So, oh, well. Yeah. yeah. One, one amazing thing it does, though, which is, uh, you know, terrible that it has to come to these kind of circumstances. But, um, like, everybody gets together like you're all in the same boat when like you're uh you know so-and-so's horse stable is flooded and then you know so-and-so's car is underwater it's like y'all are y'all are the same so there's you, you see all kinds of people helping each other out like uh neighbors who have never talked to each other and if only, you know there's always the if only like if only communities could like come together and fucking real together on shit outside of like almost annihilation yeah yeah <laughs> it would it would like perfect society almost <laughs> it's like can we if we could just have pretend hurricanes you know let, let's just pretend that everything is terrible and let's all join together <laughs> now what hurricanes are like what just like a bunch of fucking wind and rain it's like extreme so it starts over the water and it's like a big cyclone that carries like all that water with it uh not like a tsunami where the waves are coming onto shore but like it's this giant cyclone that's just spinning all this fucking water and crazy like crazy fast wind um how come no one just like uses an umbrella like wouldn't that just stop it well you have to turn the umbrella the right direction and in a moment of like you know hysteria like that people are often like fumbling that's the problem you know the first umbrella carriers they they fuck it up for the rest of us and they you, then you just got like then you just piss off the hurricane you know i'll be honest this isn't even a joke i've had a lot of issues operating umbrellas i don't know maybe i get like bad ones but they never seem to pop open like they're supposed to <laughs> that's probably definitely a case of the the bad umbrella <laughs> i have never bought an umbrella i'm always like hey do you have an umbrella and someone's like yeah you can have this one so maybe they just always give me broken ones yeah they're just like hey we'll just give him this piece <laughs> of shit <laughs> um i think this was still in a hurricane but it might have just been doing like a oh fuck it's raining bad type of night which is sometimes it seems like the same thing i don't know but uh i was at the hotel and um we lost all electricity and it was fucking nuts like to uh get into the hotel we have uh two sets of uh automatic uh, sliding duels and the fucking wind just blew one off the fucking the slot completely and the glass just went flying down the parking lot and i thought i am going to die today and i had no way to close any of it and the lobby just got like up to like the top of my toes with just flooding it was nuts and 
these guests will coming down screaming at me as if I could control anything. They will mad that we had no electricity and like we couldn't use the elevators, obviously. So they had to block down the stills and like the emergency lights weren't coming on. So I had to get like flashlights and set them up on each stillway. And uh, these guys came ho- came to the hotel like drunk. They went to the room and they went up this one stillway and like 10 minutes later, this lady came down the same way and she said, hey, did you know someone vomited all over those steps? I almost slipped on it. Oh, so I had to go clean up all this vomit and like almost almost pitch darkness. And I'm just so just drenched from all the rain that's gotten me. Anyway, I don't I don't like that job. I'm glad I'm gone. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of your hotel stories make me go, man, I'm glad I never worked in a hotel. So bad. It just, rain was always like, if it was raining, I always thought, well, tonight's going to suck ass. And I was always right. <laughs> I love rain too, but I, need to, I don't like it when I have to be like dependent on, I like just like hanging out when it's raining outside at my house. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's never an opportune time. I, I seem to always be working or like wanting to do something with the kid whenever you know it's raining. Do you think like I, I feel like hula canes also like throw like animals at things, right? Like like fucking dolphins, they're just like chucking them at houses. Is that something that happens? I feel like it does. That's uh, that's actually um a big uh, motif in the book is uh cats flying through the air and <laughs> oh no smacking against window <laughs> oh no oh no uh, yikes yeah that's an image that uh just i don't know not to i, I like to imagine my shit being you know studied and major oh, yeah? universities or whatever <laughs> and uh yeah whenever whenever the kids sit down to you know try and dissect that motif it's i'll let you in on a secret i just think it's fucking hilarious it's all i was trying to say with all the cats flying around you know a, a fun disaster hurricane story um in 1900 there was this enormous hurricane it was the great hurricane of 1900 nice uh, it's great yeah, that's what the that's what they called it because that's what it was and um caused a lot of like devastation in galveston island and shit but like where i live uh so i live in a place called lake jackson it's like south of houston and it's right on the coast and uh it's named after a plantation owner you know aka like a, a slave guy and his uh mansion which wasn't like you know 1900 that nothing was going on there at the time as far as like that you know terrible uh slave stuff none of that was happening but his mansion was like you know there and everybody was still like thought he was cool enough to name the city after and all that shit but that hurricane came and just like fucking wiped all that shit out was like man fuck your mansion <laughs> that is pretty great wow i thought i thought it was a sarc- a sarcastic great but no it's a sincere great yeah no no i thought i thought that was a pretty cool little i just learned that uh just last week I went to the local museum for the first time ever and was reading shit about that i was like oh cool Hurricanes maybe do the lord's work from time to time <laughs> Maybe this museum will also have a thing about uh, the book you're putting out as well. Yeah, I'm going to try to sneak a copy behind the glass next time yeah. I go. Yeah. You will see that movie uh, Magnolia. The one with a... Uh, that's like Tom Cruise and... Yeah, uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Like a, it's like a fuck all the ladies type of guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, there's a scene at the end where a bunch of frogs just rain from the sky and just explode. And I don't know, when I think of hurricanes, I think of that scene because that scene is extremely cool. With hurricanes, it might as well be raining frogs, you know? It's just, it's just, fuck it, why not? You're just ruining everything, so. You ever drink one of those hurricane alcoholic beverages? You ever have alcohol? Oh, oh the cocktails? Yeah, the ones that they give you uh, in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are pretty good. Yeah. 
depending sometimes you know you go to a place and you're like yeah give me a hurricane and they give you some kind of like spiked red bull and you're like what the fuck is this i went to a uh a whole convention in uh new orleans and uh they would just hand those to me like as i was walking down the street and then i blacked out and i woke up and my knuckles were just covered in blood and all bruised and nobody nobody could explain how that happened so we still think perhaps i killed like a homeless man that night we don't know what happened no oh, man it's not even a joke <laughs> i just woke up i was like why is my hand bloody and no one knew <laughs> <laughs> I have this tendency to like drag horrible confessions out of you when you invite yeah. me on the show. Uh, yeah. I didn't ask if you killed anybody, man. I didn't say I did. I just said I, I probably did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, which, who, who of us has not, you know, has not maybe possibly killed somebody, throw the first cat? I... <laughs> Jesus. I mean, nobody knows, like, with 100% certainty, they haven't killed somebody. Like, you could throw, like, a fucking plastic bottle out the window as you drive down the highway. That bottle could fucking get blown in the wind, hit somebody else as, as they're driving, blind them, and they could wreck into a tree, and you would be responsible. Oh, true story. Um, oh, no. So... <laughs> <laughs> so uh parties that shall not be named were responsible for picking up this uh piece of um restaurant equipment that had like uh like like one of those sandwich uh say you're at a sandwich shop and you got like all the doors that open up and like here's your turkey and here's your blah 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 it's like a big metal uh case oh i and, see uh, like at like a fucking subway or something you point yeah at yeah gotcha. so Party A, you know, decides to strap this to the trailer without strapping down any of the uh, the opening hoods, you know, that just are, are on flimsy aluminum hinges and could potentially fly right off. And uh, Party B is like, should we maybe tie that down? And then Party A is like, nah, it, it's going to be good. That's <laughs> We don't need to worry about that. Uh, so go down the road get to destination the cover is gone oh shit where'd that yeah. go yeah drive back there's tire marks all across the highway oh no and there's a giant crumbled metal ball in the ditch oh no <laughs> and uh so so part so party B just got the fuck out of there and said we'll never talk of this. Oh, so. well, think you should be talking about this on the podcast. <laughs> no, nah, it's cool, you know. Just, yeah, this is this is art, is what I'll say in court, you know. Yeah, this is a this is satire. Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you ever like look it up like in the news? We tried watching for you know. Um, but then we got bored and we stopped looking. So, oh, I feel like if I was involved, I would be obsessed with it. I would be up all night. I would still be looking into it even now. <laughs> it, you know, it might not have been the the first sort of experience like that. So. How many lives have you taken? Uh, I have two face tattoos. And neither of them are for murder. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, I I got asked that recently. Um, Second hand, my friend said that people were asking about about that shit. They're like, "Has Kelby killed pe people?" He's like, "That's not for you to know." <laughs> Is that like? A, a known thing like face tattoos means like oh each one's a life i've taken um used to be i was honestly shocked that people still think that uh yeah i thought that was just like a movie trope well it's pretty old school like prison tattoo culture and yeah. it could mean you know uh honestly like 
so many things. It's never meant one thing. It can mean you took a life. It can mean you lost someone close. It could mean you've spent a certain amount of time in prison. Yeah. It could mean you got raped in prison. Yeah. Like, I feel like if I killed somebody, I would get a tattoo. Like it would say lives taken colon. And then I would have like fucking, <laughs> I would be counting it down. What do you call this? Like Roman new mills. No, tally, tally mills. Marks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should get the lives taken tattoo now just so I can be propelled in case I take one in the future. Yeah. 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 And it'll also let people know that you're not a murderer until <laughs> you first tally mark. That's yeah, I've taken none. They're like, damn, that's kind of dark, bro. It's like, well, no, 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 no. If you if you see it's empty, you know. <laughs> that would uh do you think that would get me off of like a crime if I was like in the like if I got arrested, like, no, see, this is my alibi. Oh, definitely. That's yeah. why I have a uh, innocent tattooed above my crotch. Like I just, I just go, wait, 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 hold up. Like, you know, <laughs> just flash on that. One side of the like, shaft oh. says innocent, but the other side of the shaft says guilty. It just depends what a point of view you have. Yeah. Yeah. Guilty yeah. is, you know, when it's at full erect, that's when yeah. you can see the guilty and, at that point, it's like, well... Eh. It's like that uh, two-faced uh, politician from the Nightmare Before Christmas who's always spinning his head around. Oh, Nightmare Before Christmas. I thought yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street when you first said that. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, which character was this? What? Is... <laughs> um, so what are you doing with this book? I think I read that you were doing like only 200 copies. Yeah, yeah. It's going to get a 200 print run. And uh, I'm hand numbering all of them, uh, selling all of them myself, and uh, that'll be it. I'll, what about what about the uh, ebook? I'll probably drop the ebook um, closer to when they all sell out, uh, just on like a pay what you want type of thing. How many ebooks will you uh, make available? Um infinite yeah. oh bold choice I'm not, it's, it's going to be an nft actually so oh, just if you want to buy the ebook for ten thousand dollars nice i uh i got my uh fills to kill tattoo as an nft and uh <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what i was saying with that i don't know enough about nfts to make a joke <laughs> how could you I... have to be rich to understand them really yeah, I, I'm too uh, dumb and the opposite of wealthy to even know what Bitcoin is exactly. What? Uh, how can folks buy this book? Like, what? What's the website? Uh, KelbyLosak.BigCartel.com uh, is my storefront, and it's okay right there at the top. Um, should be getting the copies in from the printer uh, any day now. And as soon as I do, I'm going to start sending out pre-orders. So uh, I had the soft release date of May 14th to just kind of honestly give me some time. And, I think uh, it's going to be a hurricane that day. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. You know, so that's, yeah. it'll be, it'll be appropriate timing. Now, I've, is it true that like, if you will deep into like black magic you could like ray you could summon one of these hill canes you just come and fucking plow shit down i think so you have to like drive out to a specific coordinates in the ocean yeah. and then uh put your dick in it nice. and yeah a fish you know has to suck you off to full ejaculation and that's... so do you need like bait then like do you need to rub your dick with dead crab yeah yeah that's that's the real really know anything part. about fishing <laughs> um, you, yeah you have, you have to lather it up and uh yeah. and chum yeah and... chum for that come right that's what we always say yeah, yeah. That's uh, right. <laughs> how can people find you online man <laughs> um you can search the uh hpd database of convicted felons uh you can go to twitter at heathenish kid um instagram at kelby.losack uh I, I think that's about it um, what's the uh the, on... what's the youtube show you have now so 
J. David Osborne and Lucas Mangum, uh, fellow authors, uh, we have a, sort of a collective called Less Than Pulp. You can go lessthanpulp.com to uh, learn whatever you want to learn on YouTube and BitChute, which is this amazing, like, Wild West, no rules version of YouTube. Uh, what is it called? BitChute, like B I T. C H U T E. Oh my god. Yeah, Google doesn't like it because they associate it with like far right. Ah. Uh, but they just, I, you know. I forgot that you will not see. That was one thing I forgot yeah. to mention up top in the intro of this episode. Talking to a yeah, Nazi. You seem to today. forget every time. Every I time mean, you invite me on, you forget you, that I'm a part of the alt right movement. I mean, it's funny because we always do these episodes like with video on. You obviously have a swastika tattoo across your throat, and I just. <laughs> don't seem to notice it you're just like oh I, I bet that's the like buddhist you know yeah uh, enlightenment <laughs> symbol that's <laughs> <laughs> but no it's just a nazi sign anyway uh, thanks for coming but on. yeah white trash um white trash cultism is the show and yeah. uh you know it's, it's got a very provocative name you know and it is very like haha you know uh sort of snarky i guess but we uh we go really deep into um, art, uh, culture. Uh, we usually take either a music video, a wrestling match, a movie, something like that as a uh, starting off point to just talk about all kinds of like occultism and art and shit like that. Sweet. All right. Well, people listening to this podcast, go watch that and go, uh, go pre little Kelby's new book before i get arrested i mean i guess yeah because you will mailing those out yourself so if you get arrested how are you going to mail these books out do you have someone like in like a, a sign to take over i'm just gonna have them put in the commissary for me and you know i'll just uh i'll need something to do in jail so you know all right i guess order them when i get locked up too yeah just buy them anytime until they sell out and then i guess you can't oh well Oh well. And that was Kelby Losack talking about Hurricanes to promote his new book, Hurricane Season. Go pick it up and go buy some books that I that I published at perpetualpublishing.com. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash P M M Publishing, and leave a review on the places you leave reviews of podcasts. Go do that. Thank you.